Now, when it comes to the pathophysiology of GERD, and we have already spoken about this a bit in our introduction, this is going to involve reflux from the stomach into the lower portion of the esophagus. And by far, the number one cause of this is going to be transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation, which once that relaxes, this is going to allow the reflux of this acid from the stomach into the lower portion of the esophagus. Additionally, these patients may also be predisposed to the development of GERD as a result of an incompetent lower esophageal sphincter. Additionally, these patients may have gastroparesis. This is something that we commonly see in the diabetic population. Additionally, those who smoke cigarettes have an increased risk of developing gastroesophageal reflux disease, and of course also our patients with hiatal hernias. Now, when it comes to these patients' diets as well and their lifestyles, this can be extremely important in whether or not they're going to experience the symptoms of GERD. As we can see here, there are several key foods that worsen GERD and may show up in your patient vignettes on examinations. These include the consumption of chocolate, fatty foods, coffee, and alcohol, all of which work by increasing the production of acid in the stomach which is going to increase the likelihood that these patients will develop the signs and symptoms of GERD. Now, the real question is, why do we care about all this? Of course, our patients are having symptoms. We want to be able to help our patients and make them feel better in terms of those symptoms. However, what we really, really care about in terms of treating this condition is that we want to prevent the progression from GERD symptoms to chronic inflammation of the lower esophagus and ultimately the development of various complications which can be extremely serious resulting from this condition. These complications include esophageal strictures, erosive esophagitis, aspiration pneumonia, upper GI bleeds. This is especially true in our patients with peptic ulcer disease, Barrett esophagus, and ultimately our most feared complication of GERD, which is esophageal adenocarcinoma.